Hi, Kate with Roscoe's Rescue Ranch. Thank you for joining us today for our virtual story time with our new arrivals. We have Jemima Puddle Duck, Daisy, and Daphne Duck. And today's feature story is the tale of Jemima Puddle Duck. What a funny sight it is to see a brood of ducklings with a hen. Listen to the story of Jemima Puddle Duck, who was annoyed by the farmer's wife who would not let her hatch her own eggs. Her sister-in-law, Miss Rebecca Puddle Duck, was perfectly willing to leave the hatching to someone else. I have not the patience to sit on a nest for 28 days, and no more have you, Jemima. You would let them go cold, you know you would. I wish to hatch them all by myself, quacked Jemima Puddle Duck. She tried to hide her eggs, but they were always found and carried off. Jemima Puddle Duck became quite desperate. She was determined to make a nest right away from the farm. She set off on a fine spring afternoon along the cart road that leads over the hill. She was wearing a shawl and a poke bonnet. When she reached the top of the hill, she saw a wood in the distance. She thought that it looked safe and a quiet spot. Jemima Puddle Duck was not much in the habit of flying. She ran down the hill a few yards, flapping her shawl, and then she jumped off into the air. She flew beautifully when she had a good start. She skimmed along over the treetops until she saw an open place in the middle of the wood where the trees and the brushwood had been cleared. Jemima alighted rather heavily and began to waddle about in search of a convenient dry nesting place. She rather fancied a tree stump amongst the tall foxgloves. But seated upon the stump, she was startled to find an elegantly dressed gentleman reading a newspaper. He had a black prick ears and sandy colored whiskers. Quack, said Jemima Puddle Duck with her head and her bonnet to one side. Quack. The gentleman raised his eyes above his newspaper and looked curiously at Jemima. Madam, have you lost your way, he said. He had a long bushy tail which he was sitting upon as the stump was somewhat damp. Jemima thought him mighty civil and handsome. She explained that she had not lost her way, but that she was trying to find a convenient dry nesting place. Ah, so is that so? Indeed, said the gentleman with the sandy whiskers, looking curiously at Jemima. He folded up the newspaper and put it in his coattail pocket. Jemima complained of the superfluous hen. Indeed, how interesting. I wish I could meet that fowl. I would teach it to mind its own business. But as to the nest, there is no difficulty. I have a sack full of feathers in my woodshed. No, my dear madam, you, may, you will be in nobody's way. You may sit there as long as you like, said the bushy, long-tailed gentleman. He led the way to a very retired, dismal-looking house amongst the foxgloves. It was built of twigs and turf, and there were two broken pails, one on top another, by way of a chimney. This is my summer residence. You would not find my winter house so convenient, he said, the hospitable, hospitable gentleman. There was a tumble-down shed at the back of the house made of old soap boxes. The gentleman opened the door and showed Jemima in. The shed was almost quite full of feathers. It was almost suffocating, but it was comfortable and very soft. Jemima Puddle Duck was rather surprised to find such a vast quantity of feathers, but it was comfortable, and so she made a nest without any trouble at all. When she came out, the sandy whisker gentleman was sitting on a log reading the newspaper. At least it was spread out, but he was looking over the top of it. He was so polite that he seemed almost sorry to let Jemima go home for the night. He promised to take good care of the nest until she came back the next day. He said he loved eggs and ducklings and should be proud to see a fine nest full in his woodshed. Jemima Puddle Duck came every afternoon. She laid nine eggs in the nest. The foxy gentleman admired them immensely. 
At last Jemima told him that she intended to begin to sit the next day, and I will bring a bag of corn with me so I need never leave my nest until the eggs are hatched. They might go cold, she said. Madam, I beg you not to trouble yourself with a bag. I will provide oats, but before you commence your tedious sitting, I intend to give you a treat. Let us have a dinner party all to ourselves. May I ask you to bring some herbs from the farm garden to make a savory omelet? Sage and thyme and mint and two onions and some parsley. I will provide lard for the stuff, lard for the omelet, said the hospitable gentleman with the sandy whiskers. Jemima Puddle Duck was a simpleton. Not even the mention of sage and onions made her suspicious. She went around the farm garden, nibbling off sniblets of all the different sorts of herbs that are used for stuffing roast duck. Oh, no, you guys. And she waddled into the kitchen and got two onions out of a basket. The collie dog kept met her coming out. What are you doing with those onions? Where do you go every afternoon by yourself, Jemima Puddle Duck? Jemima was rather in awe of the collie. She told him the whole story. The collie listened. With his wise head on one side, he grinned, and she described the polite gentleman with the sandy whiskers. He asked several questions about the wood and the exact position of the house and the shed. Then he trotted off down to the village. He went to look for the two foxhound puppies who were walking with the butcher. Jemima Puddle Duck went up to the cart road for the last time on a sunny afternoon. She was rather burdened with bunches of herbs and two onions in a bag. She flew over the wood and alighted opposite the house of the bushy long-tailed gentleman. He was sitting on a log. He sniffed the air and kept glancing uneasily about the wood. When Jemima alighted, he quite jumped. Come into the house as soon as you have looked at your eggs. Give me the herbs for the omelet. Be quick. He was rather abrupt. Jemima Puddle Duck had never heard him speak like that. She felt surprised and uncomfortable. While she was inside, she heard pattering feet around the back of the shed. Someone with a black nose sniffed at the bottom of the door and then locked it. Jemima became alarmed. A moment afterwards, there was the most awful noises, barking, baying, growls, howls, squealing, and groans. And nothing more was ever seen of the foxy gentleman again. Presently, Kep opened the door of the shed and let out Jemima Puddle Duck. Unfortunately, the puppies rushed in and gobbled up all the eggs before he could stop them. He had a bite on one of his ears, and both puppies were limping. Jemima Puddle Duck was escorted home in tears on the count of those eggs. She laid some more in June and was permitted to keep them herself, but only four of them hatched. Jemima Puddle Duck said that it was because of her nerves, but she had always been a bad sitter. The end. Well, thank you so much for joining us today for our virtual story time. Uh, we have one escapee over here who decided maybe she wasn't so interested in the story.